So today we're, it's going to be real short in the classroom. We're just going to kind of go over a few things. And usually, the, you know, we spend a lot more time in the classroom for the, the play group training because there's a lot of information to cover. The reason it's shorter in the university is because we cover a lot of that information on day one in the theory and drives and, and characteristics of dogs. Basically, I want you to know we create dog play groups for one reason, to make dogs more adoptable. Right? We want dogs to get homes. The second reason is we want the dogs to enjoy their time when they're here. We want to take stress off of the dogs. And there's been numerous studies that have shown that dogs that interact in a playgroup environment or interact with other dogs, they, they increase their health. There's less risk of, of sicknesses because the stress is reduced. So whenever dogs can interact with other dogs, they reduce their stress, therefore they increase their immunity, and there's a lot of health benefits. One of the biggest things, I say two of the biggest things that keep shelters from doing playgroups are one, the liability, the risk of injuries, and two, the spread of disease among dogs. Most diseases with dogs um, can be transferred in other ways besides them playing with each other. So they can, uh, it can be uh, airborne illnesses, they can be um, uh, material-borne illnesses, in other words, they can be transferred on the clothing of the handler, of the employees. There's also uh, illnesses that are transmitted through organic matter, like grass and dirt and stuff like that, and, and everything they come in contact with. So the risk of dogs transferring sicknesses from one to another in a playgroup is not that much greater of a risk than the transferring of, of other diseases and the same diseases when they're just living in the shelter. It's another reason why I've um, been an advocate for multiple dog housing, and we talked about that in Prescott a lot. Whenever you can get two dogs into a kennel, it's great. It frees up a kennel, it saves a life. Um, it decreases the stress for the dogs in the kennel because they have a friend, they're pack animals, they like to, they like to get along with each other. And, um, and it also shows they can get along. And the the, one of the most important things is a lot of times the adopter will say, well, I can't just take you know, him and, and not him, so you can do a package adoption deal. So if you can get two dogs in, into a kennel after they've been in a playgroup or whatever, it's a great thing to do. I don't limit it. A lot of municipalities do limit it. They say, well, we won't put power breeds in. You know, power breeds, what they're really trying to say is they're not going to put pit bulls in. But, you know, if pit bulls come in together, they should be put in kennels together. If they've lived together, you know, whatever. I mean, it was cute. They had um, a pit bull in this shelter for a long time, and it came in with a little chihuahua. I think you were still captain here when that, was, when, when, uh, that happened. And it was the cutest thing. And, you know, I, I was chewy and something. Chew, right? I don't yeah. Their names. Yeah, it was Chewy and something. And they came in together and they lived in the kennel together. And then they eventually they got adopted together, which is really nice. So um, I don't like to break up pairs if they come in together. I mean, sometimes you have to adopt them out separately. But we did that great video, um, Kiki and Kikapoo. And that was one of the Shelter Angel videos, like I was telling you about, Pete, is um, th these, these dogs have been there forever in, in Prescott. And I got there and and it was like last day, they'd been there for a long time and they couldn't get a home. And one of the volunteers came to me literally with tears in her eyes and said, these dogs are, they're gonna die and they've been here forever. And they, they, they literally, they lived with their owner and the owner died. And they came in and took the owner out and then animal control had to come take the, the dogs out. So they literally saw the death of their owner. And, um, and the volunteer was so sad. And, she, and, and I think you had just started there. And I said, Ed would never kill those dogs. He would never let them perish. And so she goes, no, we heard he will. So I, wa I walked in and I said, I said, I know where you heard that. So I came in and Ed's like, well, my God, I didn't even know. And we went out we looked at him. I shot this video and I got back to LA and look it up on YouTube. It's called Kiki and Kikapoo. And it's a really powerful video. And the dogs, somebody drove up from Phoenix to get them, right? Something like Phoenix. And then they, um, they kept updating me and one of them died and they kept the other one, they were devastated. I don't know if both of them died now or not, but they were a mother and daughter, Kiki and Kikapoo, great video. So anyway, the idea is that when dogs are together, it reduces their stress, makes them more adoptable and, and um, overall it will help you save more lives. So play groups help us to accomplish that. They get dogs out of the kennels, it's a great time, you know, they, the, the kennel workers can clean the kennels, the dogs can be outside socializing, having fun. And also, you'll see a lot of people walking by when you're doing the play groups. And almost every single one that Lewis and I have done, people have come adopt the dog right out of there. You know, so. There was one on, um, on Facebook last night. Did you see that bit? Oh, no, I didn't see it. Yeah, there was one that was in the play group. Yeah. 
well, the volunteers got to know him because yeah. of the playgroup, right. and he got adopted. So I That's got great. this little message this morning that oh, he got cool. adopted, and they, they, um, they said it was due to the playgroup. That's great, yeah. It definitely, definitely increases adoptions. You know, you do have to be aware that there is a liability or a risk of injury to dogs. You know, and that's not just biting. That's just, you know, they're running around, they smash into each other, they twist an ankle, they, you know, they tear an ACL. I mean, there's a million things that can happen in playgroups. It's not a reason not to have them. It's just something to watch. So the way uh, Lewis and I structure playgroups is very managed, very hands-on playgroups. So it's, we don't kind of set them in there and go, oh, great, they're having fun, and let them do whatever they do, and let the dogs work it out is not a term you'll ever hear Lewis and I say. Dogs never work it out. It just doesn't happen. So <coughs> everything that happens in that playgroup from the minute that gate is opened and the first three dogs come in, which we're going to explain to you in a minute, the entire process is managed. And if it's, you're not managing it, don't do it. Okay? So I watch how dogs come in. I watch how they first sniff each other. I watch how they begin their playing. And I watch how they continue their playing. That is completely managed the entire time. So when, people, when you see a dog start stalking another dog, and they say, whoa, let, it work, you know, let them work it out. Let the hierarchy develop. There is no hierarchy in our playgroup. We are the hierarchy, and that's it. There is no, you know, they have a th term called the second alpha, you know, or the, the you know, it's, there is no second alpha. It's, it's the alpha, and everybody else is a beta, you know, and that's it. And that's, I think, m in my opinion, the safest way. And, and dealing with the dogs that Lewis and I have dealt with and, and continue to deal with over and over again, and you've seen you know, us work with dogs out in the yard, we completely manage the, the group. So, um, crucial is there's a minimum of two uh, volunteers with a small, small dogs, but there has to be three people to hold a play group. So a play group is three or more dogs. If you have three or four little chihuahuas running around in there, little Yorkies running around in there, and you have two people, great. But you can never leave one person in the yard, right? So therefore, you really, it's almost impossible to do two people with a play group, right? So um, three people can hold a play group. That's on the test. Three people to hold a play group. And you want to have three or more. So if you can have five people in there, when you have like four, five, six, seven big dogs, that's great. You don't want a swarm of people. Be right. careful you don't have a whole gang of people. Sometimes you overcrowd the dogs and you kind of hover over them and you stress them. So is there a ratio? Right. Three people to five dogs. No, it's just, you know, I would say, you know, I mean. Because it, you know why it's not a ratio, Ed? Because different yards are different sizes. Mm. So sometimes, like at North Central, it's a damn football field. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So we can have more people in there than we could in here. And that's kind of, we don't want to crowd the dogs, so the yard will kind of help you dictate that. And you want to be aware that, you know, what's, what's obviously normal. You know, you wouldn't want to have more dogs than people. That, that would seem illogical. Like if you had eight people in there and three dogs, it's weird, right? So more if I, people than dogs. More people than dogs. No, that's, not, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, so you, shouldn't have, you should not have more people than dogs, right? So you should always have, you know, if you have five dogs, you have three people. You know, if you have ten dogs, three or four people. But also what we always try to focus on is be aware what you can handle. Right? So if, if, you know, the three of you had a group, I wouldn't say have, you know, 10 Mastiffs in there, you know? You want to get, well, your skill set's also going to help you. You know, if you have a bunch of novices, you want more of them. And, and maybe smaller dogs. If you have a, a, a bunch of, you know, journeymen or people with experience, you might have bigger dogs and you could probably get away with three people. Yeah. Three, four people. And watch, you know, what I always like to do is say, watch and learn with smaller dogs. They're, all, they're exactly the same, right? And a lot of times they're worse than big dogs. But they're, they, they'll do less damage if you're not in control, right? So if you get, you know, five, six little dogs, Yorkies, Silkies, you know, Chihuahuas, uh, whatever in there, watch them and watch behaviors. Just because just you have um, small dogs and nothing's going wrong doesn't mean you shouldn't be watching what's going on because you should be learning from the behavior that the dogs are doing.